Hello and welcome to the second session on mathematical functions. We're going to begin with the function FABS. And this function you can see from the prototype returns a double and takes as argument a double as well. This function returns the absolute value of a number and is related to the function ABS. So now let's go to code blocks and we'll look at an example of both of these functions. So here we have F, which is a float equal to FABS and passing in the argument C. C here has the value negative 12.4. Let's see what this prints out. We just run it. And you have 12.4, which is the absolute value of C. Now, what if I use the function ABS passing in C, which remember is a float. Now you see it does not print out the accurate result. And that's because ABS is defined to handle integers, whereas FABS is defined to handle floats. So what we can do is we can say ABS of i, i as you can see is an integer, negative 15 there. And if we run this now, we get the right result. Moving on. F mod. Now this particular function, as you can see from the prototype, is going to return a double and take two arguments, both doubles. This returns a remainder of x divided by y. Right, so now if we go to code blocks, we can see an example of this function working. So we have f mod value and we are passing in val which has the value 1, 0, 2 and 10. So it's going to divide val, that's 102 by 10 and then give us a remainder. If I run this now, and there we have two. Right, so I hope that's clear. It's pretty simple. Moving on. We have C. And this function you can see from the prototype returns a double, taking as argument a double as well. This function returns the smallest integer represented as a double, which is not less than the argument num that we are passing to it. So now if I go to code blocks and we look at an example of this particular function CL of 4.9 what do you think it will print out let's run it and check it prints 5 so what this function is doing it's rounding upwards right so think of seal as being ceiling so it's rounding upwards we also have another function which is called floor, which will round downwards. This function again, you can see it takes a double as argument and returns a double as well. Returns the largest integer represented as a double, which is not greater than num or not greater than the argument passed to it. So let's go back to code blocks and we'll look at an example of this one running. Right, so floor of 4.9 now what will it print? If it's rounding downwards, then it prints 4. Right, so if we talk about seal again and we pass in 4.5 or 4.4, we're talking about rounding upwards, it will still print 5. Right, so the message is wrong there, it should have been 4.4, but you get the idea. Right, similarly here, if we pass in 4.6 or 4.4, if you like, right, let's change that as well. And if we print that out, it will still print 4. So remember, seal is rounding upwards, floor is rounding downwards. Next is exp. And this function, as you can see from the prototype, returns a double and takes this argument a double as well. This function returns the natural logarithm e, e having a specific value, which I'll come to shortly, raised to the argument power, meaning it's using the argument as the exponent. So let's now go to code blocks and we will look at an example of this particular function. So here we have exp. 
and if we ask for exp of 1 right now it's going to print the value of e and that's the value of e now what we can do is we can ask for exponent of 2 so now it will take that value of e and use 2 as the exponent or the power and print the result accordingly so this is the same as saying exponent of 2 is and then we can say exponent of 1 into exponent of 1 right so now we should get both of these giving us the same result and there it is right moving on we have ldexp this particular function again returning a double taking two arguments one a double and one an integer this will return the value of num that is the first argument multiplied by two raised to the second argument second argument serves as a power right if overflow occurs huge val is returned i hope you recall from the last time what is huge val but we will see the value printed out when overflow occurs so let's go back to code blocks and see an example of ldexp so here we are passing in 4 and 2 as the arguments so it will be 4 multiplied by 2 raised to second argument right so it will give us 16 and there we are now we will see what happens if we pass in a really huge number so we're passing in here 1024 and if we run this now that's overflow right that's the huge val that is being printed out there or the value of the macro huge val so why is it that 1024 is leading to an overflow let's understand that through a visual so here we have a representation of double precision floating point using 64 bits all the yellow bits although they're not 52 in number would be part of the fraction right as i said total 52 bits and that would be the fraction we have one bit for the sign so that's 53 bits and then 11 bits for the exponent now how do we determine what's the highest value that can be stored in the exponent we use a formula 2 raised to number of bits in the exponent minus 1 so here the number of bits in exponent is 11 11 minus 1 is 10 2 raised to 10 is 1024 minus 1 is 1023 and therefore when we use 1024 we're getting this overflow but if we use 1023 we will not get an overflow right so that's the highest value that can be stored moving on we have power now we've used this function before but we're revisiting it right just to understand the inner workings and the error handling and you can see from the prototype this function returns a double and takes two arguments double base and double exp which is of course the power or the exponent returns base raised to exp power or in essence first argument raised to the power of the second argument if the base is negative and exp is not an integer then a domain error will occur overflow results in a range error so now let's go to code blocks and look at an example of power so we start with pow with a negative number as the base and an exponent which is not an integer. So you run this and you can see we get the domain error indeterminate, right? Or EDOM. 
Now let's try pow with just two and three. So that will be two raised to the power of three. And that should give us eight. Right there we have eight. Note that I've used 2.0 f or else you will get 8.0000, right? Okay, moving on. If I use pow passing in 0 and negative 2, what happens? So let's run that now. So when I pass in 0 and negative 2, you can see I get a range error there. Right? Remember, pow is implemented as exp log of a into b. So in essence, pow is using exp in its implementation. So let's go take a look at that now. So if we do something like this, where we say exp of log of 2 into 3, then that should give us the same as pow of 2 comma 3. Should also print out 8. We just put in a 2.0 f here. And then print it out. And you can see again it prints out 8. Right? So this is using exp and this is using pow. Which do you think works faster? Pow or exp? Obviously exp. Why? Because remember pow is using exp and log. Right? Exp of course is just using log. Right? Moving on. We then have the log function. Again, returning a double and taking as argument a double as well. Returns a natural logarithm for the number or the argument. If the number is negative, a domain error will occur. But it will not necessarily return edom. It will return an implementation defined value. If zero, a range error occurs. Right? So let's now go to code blocks and look at how log works or the output of log. So we are going to pass in here num, which is negative three, and let's see the result. So You can see here we get a one dot hashtag QNAN. What's QNAN? It's quiet, not a number. What this says simply is that the argument or the values of the arguments that we are passing in are invalid. So the operation is invalid. Right? If we use four as the argument to log, And it will print out the log of 4. Right? That's the log of 4. Now, if we try to print out the log of 0, then we get negative infinity. Right? Or a range error. Okay, so that's about the log function. Moving on. Write some code. Print natural logarithms for numbers 1 to 20. So it's a very simple program. I already have it here. Right? So what we'll do is we'll just comment out this block of code because that's for the next function that we're going to talk about. And we'll comment this out as well. So that we can focus on that little block of code. So all we are doing here is we have counter, right? As you can see, there's 0, 0.0. So we actually do not need this initialization. You can just put a semicolon there, counter less than 20 and counter plus plus. And all we are doing is printing the log, right? Using the log function. We will see when we try to print log 0 that we get the range error and then of course we get the logs for all the rest of the numbers.
simple enough right now we come to log 10 this function you can see from the prototype returns a double and takes as argument a double as well returns a base 10 logarithm for number which is the argument what if number is negative well a domain error will occur what if the argument is zero then a range error occurs so let's now go back to code blocks and we'll just comment out this code we don't need to run that again and let's look at log of a negative number right or log 10 log to the base 10 of a negative number and you can see we get that domain error right because essentially it's undefined or indeterminate now we try log of 0 to base 10 right so if we try that with 0 then we get a range error right so negative number gives you a domain error zero gives you a range error if we send in thousand as the argument log thousand to the base 10 what should it give us three right and there we have it and of course you could just put in there 1.0 f and get just the three if you like right right moving on right some code print base 10 logarithms for numbers 1 to 20 now i'm not going to do this i'm sure you'll be able to manage you just have to change log to log 10 square root this function you can see from the prototype returns a double and takes this argument a double as well returns a square root of a number a negative argument results in a domain error and we saw this the last time if you recall but we'll do it again just so that we are sure of the results so we're passing in 25 first and then negative 25 as argument and so for 25 it gives us 5 which is right the square root of 25 is 5 but for negative 25 it's indeterminate or undefined Right, so that's about square root. Now that we've discussed all these, let's do a quiz. Given that FABS takes a double as argument, what will be the output of the following code snippet? Or what will the output of the following code snippet be? In teacher C is equal to 12, print F percentage 2.2F, and then fabs of C. So which one do you think it will print out? And the answer is 12. What will be the output of the following? You have float val equal to 4.3 printf floor of val. Now what will this print? Remember floor is rounding down. But this one is going to give us a compiler error. Why? Because we haven't put in that format command there. Right? What will be the output of this one? Float val equal to 2.5 printf floor of val. But here we have the format command. So what will it print here? And the answer is two point with the six zeros. Remember, floor is always rounding down. Next, what will be the output of the following? We have val equal to 4.3 printf seal of val. This is going to print 4.35, give us a compiler error or print four. And in this case, it's going to give us a compiler error. Again, you can see there's no format command or format modifier there moving on what about this one we have int val equal to 4 float power equal to 2 and then we are printing using percentage d power and passing in the arguments in this case it will print 0 why because we are specifying percentage d instead of percentage f what about this one we have double val equal to negative three and then we are passing val and power which is three to the function power so what will it print and in this case it will print negative 27 right 
Coming now to hyperbolic functions, in the last session we have seen trigonometric functions and we saw them in relation to right triangles. But you may know that these can be extended right, using the unit circle to include all real numbers positive and negative. Right? So that is in terms of a circle. Hyperbolic functions are related to the shape of the hyperbola and so we have cos h which you can see from the prototype returns a double takes its argument a double as well returns the hyperbolic cosine of the argument the value of the argument must be in radians the shape of the cosine or cosh is a catenary now what's a catenary shape this is an inverted catenary shape and this is the catenary shape. If you plot this on a graph, this is what it will look like. And you can see this in objects in real life. For example, if you've seen something like this, the chain there between those two barriers or between those two poles rather is a catenary shape and is so called uh, because the chain is bending only because of its weight. So if you think about somebody wearing a necklace, right, the necklace bends just because of the weight of the necklace. And therefore the necklace too is a catenary shape. So that's about cos h coming to sinh or sin h. From the prototype you can see this returns a double and takes this argument a double as well. Returns a hyperbolic sign of an argument. The value of the argument must be in radians. This one, if plotted on a graph, will look something like this. All related to the hyperbola shape. Then we have tanj or tan h. Again, this function returns a double and takes this argument a double as well. Returns a hyperbolic tangent of the argument. The value of the argument must be in radians. And if plotted on a graph, will look something like this. Again, related to the hyperbola shape. This ends our session for today as well as a module on mathematical functions. In the next session we'll talk about dynamic allocations. So till then take care, stay safe. Bye.